little bit. What's going on, guys? How are we all doing today? Hope you guys are killing it, living the dream. Uh, thanks again for stopping by for another video with me today. Uh, as you guys can obviously tell, it's just gonna be a vlog. Um, funny story, actually, I was gonna upload. <clears throat> excuse me. I was gonna upload a couple DIY videos, but one just came out absolutely horrible. The second one thing that I was going to do didn't end up working like I planned and obviously I didn't figure that out until like right at the end of the damn video <clears throat> so I figured I'd just kind of make up and just uh, you know <laughs> I gave up on the DIY video today so I'm just going to go for a little cruise it looks like it might rain which is kind of sketchy um, I don't have wipers on my car I have a wiper uh, I took them off just because they're they, they stay up in the uh, they stay in the up position I don't know why I guess it's a common RV swap problem, whatever. But regardless, um, today, as you can see from the title, we're just going to be talking about um, kind of if you should go with an RV20 for a swap. Uh, we're just going to be going over, you know, the cost as far as what it takes to get one running in a car, as well as, um, you know, as well as what, what, what I think personally of the motor. You know as far as if I would recommend it to you guys so let's just hop right into it you know let's just start off with the cost of the motor itself you can buy a whole motor set uh, you know meaning long block as well as tranny so you know 1500 bucks and that comes also with the ECU you know some it comes with all the accessories everything you need pretty much uh, igniter chip math all that good stuff so 1500 bucks it's not an expensive motor by any means a motor it's not an expensive motor by any means uh, you know it just it's, it's it's not that desirable in Japan so they just kind of they just kind of hang around so you know they don't ask too much for them and honestly you know people look at it as a bad thing what's wrong with it you know like 90% of the people if not all of the people that hate on RB 20s probably never owned one in their lifetime uh, they might have owned a 20 and they probably have good things to say about that because I'm sure it's a great motor, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm sure it is. But they always say, oh, 20 this, you know, it sucks, it's this, it's that, whatever. Have they owned one? Probably not. Um, and, you know, coming from a guy that has owned one, I've had this, this is going to be the first full year of me driving it. It's, it's, it's going to be, I think, now almost, I don't know, 18 months? No, no, maybe not even 18 months. I mean, I only drive in the summertime, so I had it complete last May, so you guys can do the math. So yeah, 1500 bucks gets you the motor, uh, that goes with everything you need, like I said, ECU, all that good stuff. So 1500 bucks, you know, not much, as opposed to SRs, which I believe go for at least like 2 k um, You know, which is fine, if that's your thing, go for it. Personally, not my thing, you know, it's just not for me. Not a fan of the sound, and honestly, I think everyone has an SR20 when it comes to 240s, so, you know, I figured I'd be a little bit different. So I wanted a 2 liter just so I can keep that kind of um, small displacement, you know, kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't really know what I was looking for, really. I just I just wanted something that was going to be nice, entry level. I just wanted to have an inline six. You know, at the time, I didn't have too much money to throw around, so I just kind of wanted to go with a cheaper setup, I guess, and to be honest, I was a little bit afraid of what I was going to get as far as if I would like it or not, but to be honest, I'm so happy. I love it. You know, it's it's, it's awesome. I have no complaints. You know, I, I definitely recommend it. So I guess as far as me recommending the motor to you guys, yes, if that's your thing, if you guys aren't looking for over 400 horsepower, you know, for sure, go for it. However, I had, I just read that some some uh, garage or some company, you know, performance shop, whatever, in Australia, I believe they got one up to around 600 on a stock crank. So, you know, I mean, it's got potential. It's, it's all about the build and the tune, in my opinion. I mean, any motor can be strong and reliable as long as the tune's good. And, you know, you use good parts and it's built well. So... Moving on to the parts that you need to finish the swap once you have the motor. Your stock drive shaft will work, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm currently ha I currently have the stock drive shaft and it fits up just fine. You just have to make sure you take the dust boot off your, uh, your not dust boot, it's a dust shield. 
off your transmission just so you can fit the uh, drive shaft in properly. So you're going to need mounts. I'm going with McKinney mounts. You can also use an R32 cross member. Uh, I believe that just uh, bolts right up. You don't have to use mounts or anything like that. But I chose to go with the McKinney mounts, engine and training mount. Uh, super great quality, bolts up really nice. As long as you know how the engine sits and you know, you're know you not an idiot like myself when, when I was putting it the first time where I thought the motor was straight but actually sits you know, at an angle a little bit. So you know, once I got it lined up properly, it dropped right in. Super nice quality, uh, like I said, great fitment, everything lines up. And the only thing that I had to do to modify the chassis, um, as far as fitting the engine in there, you just have to bang out the bell housing a little bit of the tranny, the, the tunnel, the transmission tunnel, on the side where the starter goes, so a passenger side. Uh, you just have to push, uh, push that in about an inch, an inch and a half. Not much, about, I don't know, an area about this big. You just gotta kinda dent it in a little bit. Uh, so you know it's 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 not hard. You can do it with any hammer. I just used uh, I just used a hammer, and uh, you know you paint over anyways. I mean you don't have to. You don't really see it, but you know in my case I just went with a hammer and just started beating it. So uh, I, that's that's the only modification to the chassis you need. So that's you know pretty awesome. So moving on, you're obviously going to need an upgraded fuel pump. Um, a 255 is fine. That's what I have. It works fine. Um, as well as you know a radiator set if you're going to need electric fans because the normal clutch fan will not work just because of space. Um, unless you get some sort of a tucked radiator set up, then you'll be fine. But you know if you're just rocking a straight up radiator, you know Mishimoto, Koyo, whatever, eBay, whatever you want, guys want to buy, you know you have to use uh, electric fans. So that's that. All right. Now when it comes to wiring the motor in, there's a couple options you can you can take. Uh, me personally, I just went and bought a wiring, a wiring specialties harness. You can buy them from Tweet Performance, you know, Chase Bay. Um, a lot of companies actually make them. Uh, actually, I believe Tweet Performance might actually just be a Jay-Z, uh, you know, parts manufacturer. But regardless, you know, there's a lot of wiring companies out there you guys can check into. And I just went with the wiring specialties. That plugs right in and, uh, you know, works pretty awesome for me. So I can't complain there. Plugged in about 10 minutes and I had that whole thing, you know, once I sorted out all the little bugs, you know, it plugs in in, in 10 minutes and as long as you get everything hooked up right, it'll start, no problem. On the other hand, you can go ahead and make your own harness, which you need the KA harness as well as the RB harness. Um, it takes a little bit more effort, obviously. You gotta splice and dice a couple things to make everything work correctly, but, you know, it's, now I could have done it just because now I tackled relocating my whole fuse boxes inside the car, which was a crazy job. Um, you know, it's, it's it's a lot harder than you think. Just getting everything to fit. give or take. You factor in the harness, um, you know, for say in this situation you buy a harness just to make things easier. Another 500, so you're looking at two grand as well as the mounts which for me personally were $350. Obviously they came with the whole kit that I bought with the motor so I know I was included uh, but retail I believe they're $350 and um, you also need a radiator setup that could be around two to three hundred dollars. So you know, right there, we're looking at you know, give or take, you know, twenty five hundred. Uh, you're gonna need a custom downpipe. Uh, McKinney makes those as well. They're about two hundred dollars. The divorce uh, two and a half inch um, downpipe. They're actually pretty nice. Uh, so that bolts up perfect. You know, it fits just how it should. So you're gonna need that. If you don't get that one, you know, I think CX Racing makes one uh, for cheaper. And, you know, companies like that, I, I'm sure there's a bunch of parts out there that do the same exact thing. Also, one more thing I want to mention that you, uh, that's kind of essential to the whole motor swap is you need a custom throttle cable bracket. Uh, you 
it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, if you guys want, I can kind of show you what mine looks like. It's, it's, it's super simple. You just need to get, you know, a piece of metal, bend it to where you need it, you know, lengthwise and then such, and basically just drop it in, cut a little notch out so you can, uh, you know, put your uh, cable in and tighten it to how, you know, how long you want it to be in there. Real simple, but that's just another key part you need. Also, since you're going from a four-cylinder motor to a six-cylinder, your tack is going to be, I believe, anyway, I think 33% off or something along those lines. So, obviously, your RPM is going to read off. There is a way to adjust it yourself. Uh, you, you need a console, like a, either, you know, a plug-and-play ECU or like an Apex e SAFC, something where you actually get a digital readout of your RPM so you can kind of match it up. Uh, mine isn't adjusted. So, I mean, it's, it, it's off, but it doesn't bother me. So, all in all, with all the kind of bolt-on parts that you need, as well as intercooler, I don't know if I mentioned that or not, intercooler and, you know, piping, depending on the quality and, you know, who you get it from, it, it's going to make a huge difference in the price. With anything, you know, it goes for all the parts that you get or that you buy for the swap. It all depends on the price price point of the product as well as you know the you know the quality and things like that so for me um, just motor if I were to buy all new parts say or not you know excluding the motor but if I were just piecing up you know swap parts it would probably be it would be under three thousand dollars if you go kind of if you don't go all out as far as price uh, parts go you know I added a blow off valve which is almost three hundred dollars you know, catch can, uh, you know, new radiator, you know, overflow tank or whatever you want to call it, uh, coolant overflow, uh, just a bunch of little bolt-on stuff that adds up really quickly. So if you just kind of want to go the, you know, the, the cheapest way, I guess, uh, three grand, a little under. Uh, so it's, it's really not a costly swap when you look at it, but you know, it is still an engine swap, so it's not going to be cheap. If you're trying to save money, to an engine swap, just keep your KA. That's my advice. So, all in all, you know, I, I, I definitely recommend it. I mean, you can't beat that sound. I, I, I'm in love with it. Uh, you know, I, I fully recommend it to you guys. Like I said, if you're not trying to push too much power, I uh, just kind of want a fun street car, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, you know, this motor, you know, give it the double thumbs up because it revs high, it revs fast. Um, you know, I think it's just a great, uh, you know, base as far as you know, making a sweet motor that can handle some power, uh, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be fast, the fastest car in the world, but it'll make 350 horsepower, 400 horsepower, no problem, and it'll be fun, uh, and that's all I'm looking for, you know, it comes down to preference as well, you know, if this is what you're about, go for it, you know, I fully recommend it, but if you're, you know, if, it really depends on what you're looking for, and it all depends on your budget as well, so you got to kind of factor, you know, a bunch of things in. But for me personally, yes, RB20 is a go. Uh, I definitely recommend it for sure. Um, you know, I think that's pretty much it as far as, you know, what I have to say about the swap and parts. I don't believe I missed anything. Like I said, 3K, give or take, uh, you know, on the, on the kind of, you know, middle side as far as parts go. You know, not going all out, but not skimping out, so three grand will get you will get you you know to where you need to be pretty much so yeah you know that's that again if you guys like this video you know give me a thumbs up definitely help me out <clears throat> I'm a little under the weather weather nice I'm a little I'm a little under the weather uh, I don't know if you guys can tell my throat's a little <clears throat> my throat's a little uh, clogged up but someone's honking at someone over there. I don't know what's going on as always, if you guys want to stick around and see some more videos from me, hit that red subscribe button. Uh, I should be pushing content, you know, two to four times every week. This weekend, expect some pretty awesome stuff. It is looking more promising than it did last video, so stick around for that. It's going to be awesome. You know, and on that note, guys, you know, I hope you guys have a good night, have a good day, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace out, guys.